Hello, I am Raphael van Asche. I'm an osteopath and living now in Austria and I'm speaking here from Vienna in the Corona time. And that's why I wanted to show you a little bit how we can be stimulate our immune system so that our health gets much better and that we don't get um, a problem with the immune system. So feeding your immune system is the title of my talk. So you all had this idea once to thinking I want to improve my health and how can I do this? And there's so many possibilities and I tried myself already many of them. I tried to be vegetarian, I tried to have a low fat diet and I tried so many things and usually it helps for a while and then everything comes to the same thing. And then I come in contact with this uh, fantastic book, The Blue Zones, where they talk about the centenarians, so the people who get 100 years and are still very, very, very healthy. And we went to ok Okinawa, in, it's a little small island in Japan, and here we see a picture from those people, and as we see, they are still very, very active, even if they have 100. So let us now go over the points that we saw with the Okinawa people. So they have a more plant-based diet and they have their own place where they have the vegetables. They have a purpose of life. So every morning they stand up and even in the hundred they say, oh, today I'm going to do this and today I'm going to do that. They uh, are very active people, but don't do gymnastics. They move naturally uh, in, in their life. And a very interesting thing that I found is that they eat 80%, they say. This means they don't eat 100%. So they stay always with a little hunger at the time. And they drink a glass of wine, which of course I like very much, uh, every day. Then that are a little bit the secrets from the Okinawan people. This with the 80% is especially hard, no? Yeah. Eating yeah, and not as long as Yeah, and interesting is they use small plates and then like this they have <laughs> That's much automatically. Better. And, and maybe they have also the family connection very yes, yes, strong yeah. very or other social, no? Yeah, and they're Isn't also it? very spiritual. And so they, oh, yeah. they, they are praying and they mm -hmm. have a lot of things. Okay. So the so. two main points that we have to do for preventing corona is eating no or as, as little as we can processed food because processed food are uh, pro-inflammatory so they make more in inflammation and the other thing is to eat anti-inflammatory it means plant-based organic uh, and fresh of course and I've, I like a lot the Michael Pollan who says don't eat anything your great grandmother wouldn't recognize as food. And I'm sure if she goes to McDonald's now, she will not recognize so much. So the very important things is eating more phytonutrients. So phytonutrients are the natural defense of the plant system. And Margot can show us a little bit the best phytonutrients you can have in your food. So, my husband uh, loves to eat the good food and I love to speak about good food and to write about good food and to cook it. So, maybe I explain you a little bit um, in nature here what we have and what we, what we are looking for. We are looking for green leafy plants, uh, especially. Um, yeah. This is the this is the pak choy and this is the salad, of course. And we are looking for all the colors. Um, actually, I don't have all the colors here, but um, but yeah, the radish. <laughs> there are the sweet potato, the carrots, the red beets. Very very important. The dark red color is one of the most important 
colors in our food, we should absolutely include very, very often, uh, not once a week, but once a day. Then we and come the nuts to nuts are important too. Uh, no? Yeah, of for the course. fats, no? Yeah, nuts very important, very good fat. Also good fat um, avocado. Mm -hmm. And do you use olive oil? Uh, sure, it comes here. Just uh, wait. Of course, we have very very good olive oil. I don't want to make some. PR, but uh, we only buy the best olive oil we can get, organic, of course. Then we have here some oily fish. <laughs> Looks a little bit uh, poor, but we didn't have any oily fish by, at the hand. So fish from a box is okay. The sardines uh, or anchovies it's a good uh, source of omega-3 uh, fatty fish. Um, we forgot before here about the spices. The spices, um, we have here only ginger and turmeric and cinnamon, but there are lo lots of others. Ah, the star anise I prepared for you. So and the spices have much more antioxidant than vegetables, no? Yeah, because they are packed. They are. They have to have it, huh? Because you use such a little amount, so they are like bombs. And uh, we know uh, ginger and turmeric together. It's. Um, so we should eat more thing. more of spices in Europe, like in India, no? Absolutely, we we should use uh, in every meal uh, spices, um, not as many as in India, because this is too complicated and it has to be simple, because otherwise we can't do it. But uh, at every meal we should use a spice or a fresh herb at least. Like also the sprouts. We will speak about sprouts uh, a little later. And uh, maybe I'll show you the flaxseed um, to finish with this chapter. Flaxseed, chia seeds, um, very good uh, source of fiber. Omega-3, no? And omega... Precursor, precursor. Of course, omega-3 if you... Um, if you don't use it as a whole, in the whole um, corn, there you don't get the omega-3 out of it. Mm -hmm. You have to to crush it. Yeah. So let us now so. look a little bit from where come those phytonutrients that we're talking about. So the, in fact, if the, a plant can't move, so it has to defend itself against the enemies. So the phytonutrients, in fact, is the immune system from the plant. And we see the plant can have pollution, can have too much heat, too much cold, sunlight, of course, there's some free radicals who go to the plant. And sometimes they have too much water, sometimes too, too little water. And for everything, the plant creates more and more and more phytonutrients to defend themselves. And maybe as human beings, we eat it, so we get these phytonutrients for us. Let, let us look a little bit in, in history. So 12,000 years ago, before Christ, um, there were all those people who were living, let us say, in wild. <laughs> they, they eat a lot, a lot of uh, plant-rich uh, phyto, phytonutrients because they only eat white plants. But with the time, you see with 400 generations, we are, we are here, we eat less phytonutrients, much, much, much less. Now our modern uh, food has a little phytonutrients. And a big thing happened um, in, uh, after the Second World, World War, where, where they started to industrializing um, vegetables where of course they are in cells and the plant doesn't have to do anything, so they have much less phytonutrients. So bad for us. 
So in many plants get now um, prepared like this, so that they have less minerals and vitamins too. Like spinach, for instance, have only half of the vitamin C than 40 years ago. Look, the minerals here, 1914, and now see much less magnesium, calcium, zinc uh, in the modern, and we say one of the healing foods is really broccoli, and we see less iron, less magnesium, less zinc, than, and this comes from the American College of Nutrition, so it is a very good source of, of, of information. And all the wild uh, plants have much more phytonutrients. Look here, the blueberries here, how much phytonutrients they have. And now the modern uh, blueberries, much, much, much less phytonutrients. The same thing with, with, with salad. So this, this salad you see a lot in the supermarkets have very little phytonutrients. So the color here you see of of this salad here has much more phytonutrients, so much, much uh, healthier for, her, for us. Now think a little bit uh, about you at home. How many things you eat are healthy? How many different colors are you eating? How many times do you eat meat? How many different kinds of food do you eat? It should be good that you're at home, you make a little list and see what I'm eating for a week, and then after next week to say, well, how can I improve my phytonutrients, my vitamins, my vitamins, so to improve my, my immune system. So let us come back here to those colors. They saw that children who eat always the same over and over again, and I know I had children too, how difficult it is to give them vegetables and colors. So you see they have much more asthma and allergies if they eat always the same thing. So what I propose is to have all the colors in your food, so then they have different kinds of phytonutrients because each color has different phytonutrients. Eating a high quality food, and Michael told you already to, eat, to try to eat biological, and eat very much different kinds of plants in a week. So this is the three um, spices or help for the defense system, for we the had it already, immune yeah. system. Yeah, you mm. explained it already. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, we had cinnamon and then. It. So this is I found this a very, very nice Funny. thing. This is a. <laughs> Paleo poo. <laughs> so there's a fossil from, from a poo they found 12,000 years ago. <laughs> and you see it's a big because the, those people make big poo, sorry. <laughs> because they had to uh, eat a lot of fibers, of course. And then they looked what is into to have an idea what was the diet from those people. And we see they eat more than 100 grams of fibers a day. And if you see the recommended fiber intake, they, they put 20 to 30 grams. It's not much. And they, no. no, very little. And look, in the UK, they eat only 12 grams a day. So, and that's why so many people have hemorrhoids and have uh, constipation and all those things. And the fibers also, they help the, the, the bacteria, the, no? The bacteria yeah. in the gut. Of course. Yeah, that's, yeah. So, another thing we can do for the bacteria, bacteria in the gut. Uh, the gut Cut. The sauerkraut and miso, kombucha, natto, pickles. So there are a lot of things who can improve yeah. the gut. Fermentation is the big thing now in, uh, in gastronomy and uh, the cooks are all crazy about uh, fermentation. Yeah, because the food it tastes good too. So one of the biggest researcher um, in America about food, his name is a uh, very funny name, is Talalai <laughs> from Johns Hopkins University. He said there is a miracle drug here that heals breast cancer, bladder cancer, detoxifies the liver, uh, it is, uh, protects the, the brain, helps eyesight, helps oh, against free radicals, treats 
autism. So fantastic drug, no? So what can you it? imagine <laughs> which it is? is okay, it? here is the solution. So that's one of his PowerPoints oh, that they used. Wow. So <laughs> it was broccoli. So broccoli written the upside down. You say broccoli. <clears throat> and so that's the, the famous um, substance, active substance of broccoli. And you see, if you look for it in, in Google, you see you can 100,000 hits um, that you can find it. So it's very, very in on, on the moment. So it's something you can't buy in the pharmacy. You have to go and buy it in the grocery shop. But if you buy it, it it's very, very quick. You lose the secondary plants uh, um, stuffs. So you have to prote protect it because if you buy a plant, it's not dead. So you put it in a plastic bag and then you make little holes so that the plant can still breathe because it needs oxygen and then you can keep it much longer and the secondary plant are, uh, are still very good in the plant. Another thing is to make sprouts from it and they help the liver detoxification and protect the DNA. So there is also a lot of studies about this uh, effect of of the broccoli sprouts. And here you see some Even. scientific studies, and there's, I just put a few, four of them, but there Even are a lot. Even for COVID and already. Yeah, yeah, all already. Look on, at that. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of yeah. research uh, mm -hmm. on, on that. Another thing I like is microgreens and sunflowers. I like them a lot. They're very, so you can put it in some earth and you put the seeds on it and they grow very fast, and they have 100 times more enzymes than the normal uh, vegetables. So, and um, the enzymes are very important for all digestion and other things we have. So how to make these microgreens? So two days you put the seeds in water, so they soak, then you put them on earth, and you put a little bit earth on top, and then you start germinating. That's three days here. And then you see the little plants already have five days, and after 10 days you can eat them already. So 10 days you have a packed vegetables with a lot of phytonutrients and a lot of enzymes. Another thing is very important are the wild eatable plants. And one, not for everybody maybe, but the wild garlic is very good for det uh, detox, the stinging nettle, here the, the kickweed, kickweed, porridge, also very good for the lungs. And then here the for the liver is the taraxacum and plantago for the lungs. So how we do it now at home, and Margaret can explain you uh, how we do it. Can I have the next uh, PowerPoint, please? Thank you. So what we do is um, we uh, eat a lot of vegetables, of course, and I cook a lot. I'm, I'm a <laughs> uh, cook. And, um, but in the morning, we do the basics. We uh, buy some freeze-dried organic powder from green veggies. We are buying also the red fruit powder. This is also, um, everything is store-bought, um, except the yellow paste, which we make by ourselves. So the powders, please look that you get organic powders from uh, the following plants. Of course, you cannot buy one where is everything inside. You buy whatever you get and mix it together. Some of them, not all of them. The same thing with the red fruit powder. Um, and the yellow paste you make by yourself. You buy organic, fresh turmeric root. And then you grate it finely and uh, you mix it with olive oil and black pepper. Black pepper is very, very important here because um, it uh, it augments the the effect of the turmeric. 
So now I show you how we do really so, and how it looks. This is our powder. Uh, it's already the green powder and the red powder mixed together. One big teaspoon of that you put in a glass. Then you have the yellow paste here, comes out of the fridge, of course. You put one small teaspoon into the glass here, to the powder. You mix it together with some juice. Some juice, maybe you have some pomegranate or you buy uh, aloe vera juice and you mix yourself a drink. This is our daily power drink. Okay, and it's a good base for the day. Yeah, we saw that already. And now I'll show you the wild plants. We use the, all the wild plants in, um, in springtime. We go outside, we collect them and we use them in the kitchen just to, to prepare our salads, to prepare uh, some uh, soups, vegetables. I explain you quickly what it is. This is the chickweed here. This is the uh, the plantago. The um, how is it? It's very good the, uh, for the lungs, no? Plantago. For the lungs, yeah. This yeah. is uh, which we use in syrup for coughing. This is the dandelion with the flowers in it. This is yarrow here. The small one. This is a nice small herb in the in the springtime. Later it it grows and makes white flowers, and it's a a great herb also in a detox, like the nettles here, the stinging nettle here, and the dead nettle with the flowers. So you can use all that. In a salad, except except the stinging nettle. Because, yes, I know. <laughs> because the stinging nettle has to be cooked to uh, for the stinging properties, of course, because it stings. Um, and uh, you can mix your salad the wild way, as we do very often in a week. So thank you for your interest and I hope you can pick up some small things out of our talk. But uh, improving your immune system is very important. And I hope to see you soon. In good health. In good health <laughs> and happy. And uh, greetings from Austria. Bye-bye.